All right, so now we're going to go over uh, the bowling ball bounce. Now, the difference between the bowling ball bounce and the ping pong bounce is uh, weight. So, as you can see with this, uh, the ping pong ball bounce uh, inside of the graph editor, it's lighter, it's floaty, it'll start up, it won't start down here, it'll start from way up here. But the idea is that it would bounce in and you'll notice the difference in the graph where it's like really, really sharp points where it hits like a V. And then it starts to top off and almost flatten out. And the more flat the curve is up here, this is the Y translate, is going to be how long it stays up there. So in other words, a vertical uh, Y translate means that it's moving really fast up and down, and when it's almost flat, or if it's totally flat, well, if it's totally flat, it means there's no movement. In other words, if I flatline this curve inside of there, it would basically mean that there is, uh, it was just going to hover there. Uh, it's not going to go up and down. It may move forward because the X translate is keyed, but it's not going to go uh, up and down until it starts to go through the timeline to where it hits here and then boom it hits and the reason it's a V is because you want to show that it's just bouncing really sharp off there just for an instant and immediately shoots back up slows peaks holds for a little bit for a frame or two and then it starts to drop back down and accelerate again and that's the whole essence of the ping pong ball bouncing also each bounce is shorter than the last one, not just because it's on stairs, this should probably be a little bit higher anyway, but just because uh, laws of physics, it's actually losing energy as it's going along. So each one should be smaller and smaller and smaller, whereas your bowling ball in the Y translate is going to do something different. It's We see the X translate would show that it's moving. I don't have that one in yet, but basically you would see that it's moving forward. Not because of this. This is telling the ball, this is the Y translate. The green is the Y translate, and it's saying you're not moving up and down. Even though you may be moving forward in the X, you're not moving up and down until I key it and tell you to drop really fast to show the weight. Unlike the ping pong ball, it's not going to go super high. Uh, I have a few little hiccups right here on purpose because when it hits that first time and it's slow, there might be just enough, and actually I should move this over, that should not be that close. And uh, come to think of it, what this should look like more would be more like this. So as it hits, boom, it just that energy immediately bounces it right back up and then it drops down not high just like really low because it's nowhere near as light as a ping pong ball so it's just going to do that a few times as it gains speed it's going to start accelerating as it hits so that's the general idea so real quickly on how we can animate that here's my ball here I'm in my front view here's my timeline so uh, with the default setup as they are, if I were to, I, I remember you move, put it in starting position after I have it in the timeline. So timeline, position, let's look at the channel box as it's setting, press S. And now it's keyed, we can see that. And let's say it's going to take about a second to go from here to here and then it's going to start to accelerate. So maybe at frame... See, I like to just hit play and then just kind of imagine it. So yeah, about frame 24. One, 24 frames a second, one second for it to go. One, 1,000. Boom, and it's there. So then I go to the point in time, move the ball to where it's supposed to be, press S. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different than I did from the ping pong ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in it's block it out where its placement is. Not blocking it out up and down yet, just where it is when I hit play. So if I go play, and then I imagine how long it's going to take for it to get to the bottom. 
and I'm imagining <clears throat> I can always change the timing. I'm going to put it at about 80. So move to 80, move it down here, press S. Let's just see what that looks like. And then it would go, I'm going to extend uh, this out and say by frame 100, it'll be over here. So I have frame 1, frame 24. You can see which frame I'm on right here. And I can even jump between frames like this. So that's 24, that's 80, that's 100. If I hit play, Now, you notice it's dipping and dropping, so let's look at that. Hold on my space bar, left mouse click up here, Perspective Graph Editor. And now we can see the curves here. That's because uh, this, so uh, when the, uh, the ball is selected, let me choose front view for this one so it makes a little more sense. When the ball is selected, that's when I see the key information, the, the keyframes. And I can isolate it because this starts to look like a ball of uh, a bowl of yarn all tangled up, and I can isolate and just look at what's going on. If I look at the Y translate, and I select it, I'm using my move tool, so I just do a drag select and press F. We can see what that's doing. See it's dipping in and going back out, and that's because these are automatically curving. Same can be said if I zoom out and look at the, um, press F, look at the uh, X translate. So I'm going to grab both of these, shift select them. I'm going to select them both. And up here, once again, is where I can choose um, how the curves are. Right now it's set to auto curve. I want them linear. Boom. And you notice now they're nice straight lines from point to point to point to point. And what that did is if I rewind now and press play, it's no longer doing that weird loopy going in and out as the curves change because they're weighted. Okay. So that's actually working pretty well. So... I can make adjustments of like the speed I like uh, so far. I think it's okay. Uh, I imagine it shooting out of here faster. We'll, we can worry about that. But now I want to set the keys of how this bowling ball is going to hit. So just like in that graph that I showed, what should happen is that it rolls and then the curve will just drop. Maybe those first ones, I'll put those in later, but they'll just go pop and then go roll. It can't drop down here because the stair is here, so the ball has to clear the stair before gravity can pull it down past the stair. So, but I just want to start setting keys, and I could go and key every single one and like do finesse every single one uh, instantly, but that could take a, a fair amount of time, and I want to do this, you know, nice, but but relatively relatively quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start keying all the parts that I think that the ball is going to hit the ground. Okay. So I zoom in, see it in my uh, timeline, and as I scroll forward, boom, 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 say right about here is where that ball should be hitting the ground. That first one, it's not doesn't have a lot of momentum. The only power is going to be it dropping from gravity. So unlike all the other ones where it starts to get a little more distance as it's hitting, as it's getting speed, this one we're not going to have that much. So I'm just going to put it right about there. And I can always change this. I'm just going to move it down and press S. And that's going to change everything else. You know, it's running deeper now into the stairs. Now I'll go to the next one. Maybe lift that up just a wee bit. S. That looks good. Just S. Maybe just a touch. Uh, 
I might even just start to vary things up just a little. Lift that one up just a little bit right there. And each time, so timeline, position, S. Timeline, position, S. Timeline, position, S. So I'm just marking where this little fellow on these keyframes. So if I screw uh, jump from keyframe to keyframe, what we should see each time that it's landing. Okay. Oh, that wasn't it. There you go. So now, bam, hits here. Now what I have to worry about is it penetrating. It's like a cannon going through all of these. And I have to make sure that it doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to this one. This one's that heavy one. I really want to show the weight of it. So I'm going to go to the frame right before it and just lift it up here. Right about there. Boom. You see it hit. Now, you notice every time I set a key, what's happening, it's starting to dip uh, over and over. It's because it keeps on um, making these curves, right? And so if I zoom in, you'll be able to see how it's starting to curve instead of straight lines. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a, it's a bad thing. So I'm actually going to turn that off. I'm going to go into the animation settings. Under animation, and where it says tangents, I, yes, I want them weighted. So we'll talk about that. And I want them linear going in and linear going out. And save. And once again, let's go to here. Animation. I want weighted tangents, and I changed default tangent in and out linear to linear from auto. And so now, let me just grab these make them linear. I'll clean it up and soften it up later, but right now I just want to be able to, there you go. So now if I go over here and I lift that up because it's still going to be above, bam. Lift that up, set, Bam. And what we'd see in the graph editor is we're starting to see those steps we talked about. See? Every once in a while, I want to hit rewind and hit play and just see. That's that's not looking too bad yet. That's, that's actually looking good. Uh, another way of doing this is if I'm actually good about where these guys are going, uh, is I know that, oh, right about here, I know it has to be lifted. So I would set a key, set a key, set a key. Set a key. So what does that mean? Watch this. I know that the ball is penetrating and I set a key right there. So I'm on the Y translate. I'm going to select that and I'm using the move tool. You have to have the move tool for this to work. I skip the next key and grab the next one, which is the one that I put where it should be lifted. Skip the original key, grab the next one. So I have every other key of that set I just created and I hold down shift and this is the important part, shift and middle mouse. And whatever direction I start to move in, whether it's up and down or left to right, is going to lock the keys to move only up and down or left or right. So when I shift and middle mouse and I drag up, you see it locks into these arrows on my cursor going up and down. And now I can lift all those keys. And look at that. 
now I've got those stairs looking exactly the way. So let's see what that looks like. Bam. Boom. 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 See that? Let me do that again. I'll rewind. So I'd set those other keys where I'm supposed to lift. I grabbed the first one I added. The next one. The next one. Shift, middle mouse, drag up until I see these guys flat line, which means they're not going up and down. And now if I go in, let's take a look. And then I would just continue that for the rest of them. One last thing is that little bounce we talked about, like right here where it hits. And a little bit of cleanup. So if I look at this, let's zoom in on that area. Where it just hits and rolls and we want it to hit and do a little bounce. Boom. What I can do, I set a key here, and I go up, set a key, and actually I just move it up just a little bit, set a key so we have that little bounce. See that? We have that just that little bitty, that little hiccup right there. If I want to revert these, I can always go I grab these and say, oh, I want that to be a curve. That looks nice. Now we're starting to get that little little bit of curve right here, a little curve there. And then I would just continue that on. That. Just to bounce that out. And I would just continue that on. Try that out and see how you like it.